Betsy and Thomas here for the American Intelligence Media. Thomas, you know, just when you think you've identified all the swamp monsters in this putrid mess in Washington, we find another patch of monsters that I, I have not even heard about before. But if we don't uncover them and bring them to the surface so that patriots can see the evil that they are committing on the American people, then we're going to be toast. So I can't think of anybody better than you, Thomas, to drag them up and show them who they are. Well, Betsy, I assume you're talking about our exciting connection with the head of Leaders Technology um, in Ohio, Michael McKibben, who is the person who actually wrote the source code for Facebook. No, no, I thought that was uh, Mark Zuckerberg. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg, well, that's a pretty funny story. So let's go into that for a second. You see, the qu there's wrong questions that are being uh, asked. They need to look in the, a different place. Mark Zuckerberg, of course, had to pay $65 million to the Winkleman, Winklevoss bro uh, twin brothers and three other students at Harvard because when he was there at Harvard, these five students were given the source code for what had already been created at Harvard called Harvard Connection. It was basically a social network, one of the early ones, uh, but the, the, these are very small groups. These are uh, groups that really can't go beyond 60 people without the system degrading. And so at that time, there were a number of these systems around. They were actually being used in business and you could, you know, these chat room kind of experiences. Well, they had one called Harvard Connection and they turned it into one. They, re, they wrote the code, those five students, to turn it into what was called Connect You. And that was then like the social system for the students at Harvard. Now, other universities were doing this on, uh, also on a small scale. And so what happened was those five asked Mark Zuckerberg to please write a business plan and get a no new overall look and brand this in a different way and take it the next step up so that you not only just post on each other's uh, walls, but that you can actually have you know some interaction that is more dynamic. Dynamic, yeah. And of course, as we know, he was accused of using it to uh, judge the girls' bodies on the soccer team and on the different... Uh, athletic teams, and so he used it for some very banal purposes once he created what he called the Facebook.com. Well, actually, he didn't really change much at all. The source code he was given, and the lawsuit demonstrates that, and he had to pay $65 million to those people, and now they want more because during the lawsuit, his lawyers proved what we as anonymous patriots say all the time. Facebook was overvalued. It, the valuation on fa Facebook was demonstrated in the court with facts to show that it was worth one-fifth of the value that uh, Goldman Sachs had placed upon the business. They said it was worth $15 billion, and they proved that it was worth somewhere near $3 billion, and even that was a stretch, so that they wouldn't have to pay as much. But it also demonstrated the false valuation in that company and the fact that Others came in once they saw that Mark had successfully stolen from Harvard University the source code. But this isn't the source code that made this social media platform scalable. Correct. For, for you to be able to extend it or extensibleness or to be able to create a scale that is literally reaches practically to infinity. Well, to be able to take that small chat room and blow it up to include anybody who wants to jump in on the conversations. Well, that is the reason that Mark didn't have to pay out more, because exactly as you say, it was still a small system at that time. And what Mark did was simply take it the next step, and he put the name on it, Facebook. Later, Facebook... Because infinite amounts of money came in, practically infinite amounts of money, from mm, amazing government officials, lawyers, people like James Chandler, uh, National Security Advisor, John Podesta. And we're even going to point out that in the beginning, back in the 90s, a group of people was al uh, already manipulating these things, a group of DC insiders were manipulating these things. And the question that should have been asked is where did the source code come from that Harvard used to create Harvard Connection? That was never asked because it was changed into Connect You, and then the students said they owned it, which they didn't because they admit they don't they didn't write the source code. And then they say Mark stole it and stole their idea. Well, they did lay out the idea. They laid out everything. All Mark did was 
uh, write a few lines of code and the entire Facebook, the facebook.com code was 767 lines of code. That's a very small program. Right now it's 62 million lines of code and Mark Zuckerberg says he never codes anymore. He can't explain the code. He can't explain what he did. And he basically simply lies when he comes on uh, and is being interviewed, as you can see um, in one particular interview, one of his first ones after Excel poured $17 million into the project, he comes and he says, oh, I was at Facebook, I was there, I, mean, I was at Harvard, I was there with my friends, they didn't have a Facebook, I made one. Well, um, what patriots are beginning to wake up and see is that Mark Zuckerberg appears to be just a CIA stooge. He's just a front man for what was really happening behind the scenes. Yes. And now let's, let's, let's go a little bit further on Facebook and then go into who these criminals are, because they're the usual suspects. When you hear the names, you're just going to go, what, what, what? How is that possible? How can these criminals still be to this very moment, this very moment, the biggest criminals in Washington, D.C.? And before you go, the reason that this is so important to our listeners is that the government, the deep state, the cabal, has turned Facebook into a weapon that is being used against us. And we all need to wake up and we need to use this weapon against them and we need to do it now and we need to do it with ferocity. So this is why we're explaining all this because we have some other revelations about this whole uncovering that we'll be sharing in future audio. So Thomas, get us started, get us started, lay out that uh, platform for us. Well, Betsy, you and your team have already laid out on Truth News Headlines and all over the internet this article that has been written by the Anonymous Patriots about leader technology and about patent theft and what happens in patent theft and the reason that it's legal and who's involved in it and what has happened to the U.S. Patent Department. So we need to tell a bit of a story. Recently, you and I were raging on, or excuse me, I was raging on, ranting in like a lunatic about the fact that leader technology had their source code stolen and then taken to Harvard and given to the chancellor of Harvard, Larry Summers, who was, of course, the head of the World Bank, the second uh, undersecretary of the U.S. Treasury. He was an advisor to every major intelligence uh, um, agency in the U.S. government. He has held the highest positions you can possibly imagine. And at the time that Zuckerberg and the Winklevoss uh, twins and the other three students had this issue going on. It was he, Larry Summers, who had brought the source code to Harvard, as they always do. Military experimentation happens at the highest level in our universities, and that's what ARPANET was actually created for, it was a communication system between universities in America about military uh, patents or military ideas that are then turned into patents. And then those universities get those patents to either DARPA, who put up the money for the uh, for the research, or the National uh, Founda Science Founda Foundation, or NQTEL, the CIA's research and development, just like DARPA is the military, Department of Defense's research and development. And then NQTEL, a venture capital company that takes money from the U.S. taxpayers, gives it to a company called SAIC, and it's now been changed and its name is Lidos. But these companies are international corporations that take these stolen patents or patents that have been turned in that have been claimed for the U.S. government for national security purposes and then shuffled into the military, weaponized encryption codes placed in the source code and then turned into open source materials. That is what Larry Summers brought but instead of open source materials through NQTEL or DARPA, he brought stolen patents that were taken by a, the very patent attorney. A, a national wait, 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 you mean he took patents? What, what, did he steal them? He stole them. No, no, American innovators. We really count on the U.S. Patent Office to hold our patents in a protected way so that we can benefit it as entrepreneurs from our hard work and creativity. You mean this guy, Larry Summers, just stole it from someone? Uh, well, actually, Larry Summers, yes, was part of a team that took it, and it was the patent attorney James Chandler III, who was the representative of Leaders Technology, Leader Technology in Ohio. Oh, okay, so he's the attorney that Leader hired 
to then walk their patent through the system? A, a previous Clinton national security advisor as top at the top position you can practically have. And he is a patent attorney. He wrote the Espionage Act. He wrote all of the laws concerning these type of illegal seizures of patents. And one of the laws says that if you turn a patent into the United States Patent Office and the committee, and the committee has on it members of the Department of Defense, DARPA, InQtel, LIDOS, and other international corporate organizations, military and otherwise, uh, uh, well, other corporations and the military, they all sit around in a committee and if they look at a patent, they say, hey, this might be good for the military, we can weaponize this, then they confiscate it and you get nothing. Uh, and that is against the U.S. Constitution. There's actually provisions. If they take something from you, they have to pay you. They have to uh, give you recompense for it. Remuneration. But uh, but this technology, this patent, this particular patent that created social networking never got to the patent office. But had it got to the patent office, undoubtedly it would have been seized and it would have been then used by the military and they would have then done what they could. They would have sent it out to other university, to uh, the university network through ARPANET. They would have sent it to other uh, corporate agencies and corp military industrial complex corporations to see what people could do with it. So but not until they put a kill switch and an encryption, a base code into it, into the source code before they make it into open source material for people. So that's what they, they stole leader technologies material twice. And then once at first they gave it to through James Chandler to Larry Summers at Harvard University to do experimentations, elaborations, proof of concept, you know, carry it forward. They didn't really have a patent. That's the reason you will get no straight answer about where did the original patent come from for Facebook. And you won't find an answer to that because it was stolen and it was put into open source as they do with all the stolen patents that are confiscated for national security reasons and the ones that are stolen just by industrial espionage and patent espionage that goes out and steals these from people and then militarizes them. And they make a ton of money in these venture capital companies like InQtel. You know, in our research, I found out this term called a patent troll. And it, it sounds like you're describing it. It doesn't matter uh, how they're going to get you. They're either going to get you by bamboozling you using their attorneys, or they're going to get you by getting your patent and saying they need it for national security purposes. Either way, or many more ways than those two, uh, Leader Technologies was doomed because they had such a fantastic product and the government wanted it. Is that what we're saying? Yes. Now, uh, we need to make a very clear distinction here. The quantum leap in patent, the patent that was the quantum leap for social networking, was not the one that first went to Harvard. That was the first phase of Leader Technologies' uh, development of what you would call groupware. As we said before, there were some there was some groupware out there, but they were limited. They couldn't have scalability. They couldn't be expanded basically to uh, handle millions and millions of people instantaneously in the same space. Let's say, for instance, speaking on Facebook or speaking on Instagram or Twitter. That was a stage Mark hadn't developed even when he was sued and lost for $65 million. That was the first stage. The second stage was what took him years to do because they didn't have the next stage. Leader Technology had the next stage. He didn't give it to them. He was smart enough. Plus they had to develop, they, they had to work out a few quirks uh, in this huge step. So the patent itself is the largest step in connectivity, uh, both for scalability and for uh, being able to expand the group that you're in to hold millions of people. That wasn't developed until years later by Facebook when they again stole the corrected and advanced patent from leader technology. So once again, because of literally what you would call industrial espionage condu conducted by the, one of the highest people in this country, the national security advisor, James Chandler, you don't get any higher than that. This was a industrial espionage attack against them. So they 
Leader Technology and Michael McKibben have been fighting this for 17 years. They went, took it all the way to the Supreme Court, but of course they put a judge in who threw it out immediately when it got to the Supreme Court because, and that judge had never had a single patent case brought before well, him. Well, they're all rigged. All these judges. Well, we have it's now a found system. out. It's through, just despicable. We found out through Leader Technology, and you know because you spoke with Michael, uh, that they simply place the right um, head judges uh, and the right appeals court judges, and they place just a few judges in a few places, and they basically can rule the day. That's why it's always the same stupid judges contesting things that Trump does. And then, of course, they are thrown out because those are bad judgments by bad judges. So anyway, he came before the Supreme Court, but there was fraud involved. So it's going back to the appellate court. And he's starting kind of again because he has the, now the demonstration in just these last few years of absolute fraud that was conducted throughout all of this. And we're going to follow this every step of the way until it's done right. We believe that this is the biggest story because when you want to talk about Big Oil and uh, uh, and Rockefeller and oh, Standard Oil... Oh, I bet Oil, a lot of patents get stolen and put away on a shelf with... Free energy devices. That's where I'm going with this. You got Big Oil, uh, which turned into the Seven Sisters. They steal the patents, or the patents are national government, steals those patents to make sure that Big Oil free energy isn't contested by free energy devices. We know that. That's the reason free energy devices are usually patented and developed in foreign countries. Exactly. Well, that's that's actually how we got here in the first place because we were looking into this whole patent suppression with free energy and then found that this was going on with Leader Technologies. We came across Leader Technologies page or that was championing Leader Technology, a, a page called uh, Americans for Innovation. And initially, you had turned the Anonymous Patriots onto this and we looked at this and said, oh my gosh, this is the most comprehensive calendar of the crimes of Washington in relationship to patents and everything else, that we found it to be a tremendous resource and we've been using it ever since. You went in and grabbed many of the charts and you you made this public the minute that you saw it, you and your team. What we did is we studied it and we've been upset about it and so have you, especially what you've been writing on your pages of Tooth News Headlines, supporting leader technology. So we've been all beefed up about this. You and I were having a conversation and somehow this uh, audio, that audio came to the ears of Michael McKibben and he contacted you and then, you know, we've had conversations and the conversations are going to go on because we believe that this is the banner that we can that we can rally around because big oil is hiding some patents. Big pharmaceutical Duh. is hiding many, many, many patents and, and killing naturopathic doctors uh, allegedly all over the place as well as, uh, you know, they, they support. Uh, and then, you know, look at the Food and Drug Administration, which is really... Nothing more than a corporate stamp for Monsanto, and when you well, look they at are the out to kill and cull the human population. And I know a year or so ago, listeners probably thought that that was a pretty bizarre statement, but we were pretty well proven that that's true. Now, with all of our citizen intelligence reports, yes, and one that just came out today was the beautiful mothership because we're going to use this as a mothership. This is well. Can I take a moment to describe that? Uh, yes, please. Well, you see. In the alt media space, many years ago, uh, many of us started uh, just getting together and building our audiences because we realized that the only way that we were going to overtake and overcome the propaganda corporate media was by having troops on the ground. And so everyone's out there doing their thing, their YouTubes, their articles, and we're all striving for truth. And then we began to bundle them up. Like, we would know this station over here is telling truth, so we're going to stay with it. We'll continue to allow it in our cluster of truth. But this one over here, eh, they're trying to give us disinformation or we find that they're related to some kind of uh, uh, deep state organization. So we f we dismiss those. So that what's happening is that more and more alt media stations that resonate with truth are coming together. And then when we began to look at how vast we were becoming, we realized this was like a mothership. And that's why we have now an Apple and an Android app on the American intelligence media where you can get all of our channels. And the purpose is, is to be able to use leaders, technologies, 
uh, development, which was scalability. I mean, we're riding on that technology in order to scale our message to people all over the world in lightning speed. This YouTube video, for example, once we post it, it will go out to thousands and people will be educated and they will send it out. They will tweet it out. They will embed it in their web page. And folks, that's how we're going to win the day. We're actually going to use the social media that was created by Leader, then weaponized by the CIA to take down the thugs and clean out the damn swamp. And that's what's been happening with the leaks, with Vault 7, with Snowden, with with uh, William Binney, with Dennis Montgomery, it's all coming out. There's no way to hide it because the internet is being used for what it was supposed to be used for. And we want to explain a little bit of that because Michael McKibben is a genius. Mark Zuckerberg is an idiot. I don't believe Mark Zuckerberg could write a line of code at this point. I think that he's pretty much Prove it. Let the two of them debate to describe how they created this. That is going to be one of our suggestions. And Mark, don't forget your hoodie, honey. And when you hear Michael McKibben speak of this quantum leap that his patent uh, made available, infinite connectability, hyper-connectability, uh, expandability, scalability, when he speaks of it, he's speaking of it because he's a musician. It's like a musical score. He's talking about inspiration. He's not talking about judging girls' butts on the soccer team, as Mark Zuckerberg was well noted for doing. That's what he turned it into, was a, a way to assess girls' bodies on the athletic teams. Whereas Michael McKibben is speaking about the freedom that the internet was supposed to bring everyone and about the ability to create social groups that become so dynamic that they're more than just what an individual can do on their own. And we've seen that when we have hyper-connectivity we can do amazing things, well, not only well, in the alternative news, but in science and in everything else. Yes, well, we're doing that right now with Truth News Headlines, where we compile during the day the best things that are going on in alt media to present to you in an intelligent way. And there's so many other opportunities like that, thanks to the technology that Leader, not Facebook, brought to us. Let's talk more about this technology, because no matter how many hours I speak with Michael McKibben, I don't think I'm quite intelligent enough to understand, and I don't. I know Mark Zuckerberg isn't, and I know that most people aren't, because I actually have a degree in computer science, and one of the early ones, and I understand it from the ground up. And so let me put it like this. In the early chat rooms, it was a file. You all went to the file, and one at a time, you added to the file, and it... It received it, it verified it, it confirmed it, and then you went back to where you were. The file never moved. What we could describe as Leader Technologies' social networking platform or groupware, as, it, as he describes it, goes from relational type programming to object-oriented programming. We go from two to three dimensions. So I describe it as a uh, as a flat folder in two dimensions is what it was when Mark Zuckerberg worked with it. And then when they got the second piece to the pie of the patent, they moved it into what then became something like, let's use the analogy of a cube. A cube that can go as small as you want, as big as you want, depending upon how many people join that group. It has connectivity in all directions simultaneously all at once. And instead of using... Uh, linear hierarchical relationships, it used randomly, or, or actually ma machine generated purposefulness for the way that the files are stored. So that you're basically, if you wanted to say your data or your consciousness or you on Facebook, you're zooming around and you're leaving your data all over the place, right? But it doesn't matter because as long as you have the super secret way to identify each piece of that data that you have come into contact with, you not only have a three-dimensional relationship to it as an object relationship, but everything you say and do changes the entire environment. So it's like a blockchain. It's like a Merkle tree or what's called a hash tree in encryption. It's kind of like an encrypted verified system that is working at infinite speeds with literally uh, infinite participants in a space that can be scaled to infinity, practically. In, 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 in terms of human consciousness, it's infinity, because it's as big as this, it's as big as the data center that you want to create that can hold this data. So Facebook can get as big as the data centers that hold it. Well, that concept also created 
YouTube. So it isn't just Facebook that stole it. Google stole it and Google turned it into Google Docs and a thousand other Google programs, which are all based upon this uh, this uh, connectivity through scalability inside of a specific system. We couldn't do any uh, meta uh, data interchange virtually at all without Michael McKibben's patent. Yeah. This patent is worth trillions of dollars. Right, it went into all of these systems. Mm, it's not just Facebook. But for the deep state, this became a way to enslave human beings. Oh, yes. And the patent control created what we now see as tech barons, just like the Rockefeller was the oil baron, just like Carnegie was the steel baron, just like uh, on and on and on. Now we have, and then you have pharmaceutical barons, but they're more corporations. Then you have industrial military complex corporation barons who get, which we've described before. Now you have tech barons because the internet was created as a way to create weapons. It was connecting colleges that did research to make weapons for the military. It's always been a weapon. It was only allowed to come out. For instance, when people say that uh, uh, Sir Tim Berners-Lee uh, in at CERN in Switzerland at the, uh, at the Large uh, Hadron Collider created the World Wide Web, that's complete nonsense. That is the home of the European headquarters of the rogue CIA. He didn't write that code. He wasn't even a code writer. Okay, myth. The myth that nobody owns the internet. Complete myth. Just like at Harvard, the students were given a program to work with to make it better. At Stanford, uh, Leonard Bosick and his wife, uh, Sandy, uh, what's her last name? Uh, Lerner, I believe it is. But anyway, uh, Lynn, Lynn Bosick, who's, who founded Cisco, stole the source code from Sanford. Where did it come from that it, that it came to Sanford to begin with? It was a military open source code given out to universities. And the reason they handed it out to their students is because those students were asked to take it the next step further. Oh, but they kept the back door to it, right? They it's always, always the way oh, they do. We'll always. give you this free software or whatever, the, and y'all use it, but we have the special keys. And Oh, and when you answer this next question, make sure to tell folks about that Stephen Crocker. Well, okay, but that goes back to the group and we'll get to in just a minute. Google... Sergi Brin and Larry Page, same thing. They were at a university. Through InQtel and DARPA, they were given money to develop a searchable engine. They already had the open source code called Mimex, which already had the encryption backdoor code from the military put into it. So they, you know, when they took their company and created Google, they didn't create Google. They were students. They were given infinite money to become a company that absorbed every company that was their competition, but they started from an open source code given out by the military. And it. so when they these guys, also the same thing I was describing with Cisco routers, okay? the When the ARPANET was only military, Cisco routers were created at Sanford, and these two students, man and woman, got married. They stole it. And they actually, there were lawsuits over this. And in the end, they went and created Cisco Systems Incorporated, which every server in 2000, Cisco was worth hundreds of billions of, matter of fact, they were making hundreds of billions of dollars a year, about $500 billion a year. It was one of the largest, third largest uh, corporation at the time in 2000. And every single internet communication went across a Cisco server. Well, they had backdoors to the NSA. This is well known even in the mainstream media during Obama's time. This came out when the CIA started in a war with the NSA and they showed that NSA was had a backdoor to all the Cisco servers. Well, Cisco no longer had the uh, monopoly on that. Now, we can go back a bit to patent theft because patent theft has been going on a long time. One of the biggest companies for patents is IBM. IBM is the CIA. Of course it is. It's international. You can't take anything international in those days without being approved by the CIA. And every single device they sent to a foreign country had a back door in it. And that was created in, I think, 1993 when a group of people came together to insist that IBM have the back door. Let's name the criminals 
who to this very day control Washington, D.C. Let's see, who was there for those initial meetings? Oh, and by the way, let me explain. When Facebook was given, excuse me, when the universities, particularly Harvard, was given this the source code, which James Chandler took as the patent attorney for leader, and he distributed it, he also created his own uh, crypto.com out of the country so he could have his own patent. So he stole the patent too. Well, uh, when when that was created, all of these companies were given many, many different things. And it was all coming back to the fact that the U.S. Patent Office, by these stolen, manipulated, or um, Sachs, Goldman Sachs, Wall Street banker, broker, created CIA-backed, military-backed companies, which have stooges at the head of them, like Cisco. Uh, Lynn Bosick was kicked out of his own company a couple years after it became worth billions, when Cisco became worth billions. He and his wife just kicked out. Larry Brin, Sergey Page, uh uh-huh. Yeah, where are they now? Eric Smith, the stooge, has come in, and they were stooges to begin with. Mark Zuckerberg, a total stooge. Sorry to have to say it for all of those who think that Microsoft was built upon the brains of Bill Gates. Incorrect. He didn't write any of that code. Oh, no. He, his mommy knew the people and got him all hooked up, didn't his he? His mommy got him that his job because oh, he, he didn't have a job. He didn't have a job, so mommy knew. Who did mommy know? And he did not write. But, but who did mommy know? He sat... She's, her, she sat her, on the board. Her, hus- her, her father her husband, was the head of one of the largest banks that back, backed the IBM. So she was on the board of IBM and a member of IBM was on her bank board and they were sitting one day and said, oh, we need someone to write the code for this new thing called MS-DOS. And she says, oh, don't worry. I'll get my son to do it. Right. Don't, so, don't, so, don't seek anybody else. So, so um, and Billy got a job. Mommy set him up. And then uh, daddy was busy working, trying to depopulate the world with Planned Parenthood, wasn't he? He was the lawyer for Planned Parenthood and he is one of the largest eugenists eugenicist on the face of the earth. His son is following in his good footsteps, proudly admitting in public that his new program in Africa should kill 17% of Africans. Okay, so like, when are people going to wake up and go, oh, holy crap, this is the enemy? Well, the point is, they don't know this. Who could believe that the U.S. Patent can do this, office can do this, and if, and, and here's the beauty, we've we put this in our articles, Anonymous Patriot Intelligence articles where we state and show the U.S. patent law that says that if you turn in the patent and they take it, if you even speak to another person, you can be put in jail for 10 years or more and charge huge fines. If you work on it ever again, same thing, absolutely. Or if you tell anybody, it, you have to keep it a secret and all of your effort to create your patent has to be flushed down the toilet and never do you receive any recompense, remuneration, recognition, not even in a statute of limitation or any other thing. So if the high-tech guys, and they're mostly guys, uh, especially Google, which has now become so incredibly powerful, Microsoft. Let's remember Microsoft was built upon Intel microprocessors, which are CIA, Incutel, incubated company which puts a backdoor into every single Microsoft program and every computer with an Intel Microsoft processor inside. So all these companies that supported Obama and gave him $2 billion for his library, they controlled the White House during the entire time he was there because he was told this. He was told the truth because he got he. there was no way to hide it. Anyone who asks pointed questions on this will find the truth that these stooges that these dummies are then replaced by simple uh, who doesn't know who doesn't know that facebook is controlled by the cia and the nsa probably the ones that are using it (laughs) yes you'd have to be blind not to know that you could not have two working neurons and a synapse between them to not know now that jeff bezos is a CIA operative, and Washington Post is a propaganda machine for the CIA. And the New York Times is Carlos Slims. And well, I want to go back, because we've got this guy, Stephen Crocker, that we've posted articles on, that's actually got his thumb on the internet. And what do we mean by that? Well, that's why I didn't name the you, evil ones in the circle. Oh, you yeah, didn't, okay. Stephen Crocker uh, was in the circle to begin with, with I, IBM, and said the FBI needs a backdoor into all your machines. And then when IBM started sending machines to other countries and the CIA said, no, you have to have a backdoor for the NSA, for the CIA to do 
their counterintelligence work, their intelligence work. That's international security trumps national security. That's the reason the president doesn't even know these things are going on because he hasn't gone into the right office and asked the right person who is following a presidential directive that people may have never seen because it's not filed in the National Registry. That's what Obama did. He wrote more than anyone in history. There are so many secrets going on. The entire 17 intelligence agencies, all the corporate wings, all need to be closed down. Sweetie, They're all they probably compromised. don't even know this. They are so compartmentalized that those in the rank and file probably have no clue that this is going on. Well, patent with big uh, patent theft for from big tech companies is bigger than oil, it's bigger than pharmaceutical, it's bigger than the military industrial complex, it's bigger than it all. Why? Because here's the way that it works. Google, well, DARPA put out a request that they wanted a robot and they made the specifications. The robot needed to be able to get in a car, get in a Jeep, get in a Humvee actually, technically, get in a Humvee, drive it to a, a place where that is being bombed and shot at, with the soldier inside, the door is blocked, so he has to bash through a brick wall, get the soldier, put him in the Humvee, and return. Oh, uh, wait a minute. Uh, translated, they're going to have a robot come to your house, knock down your door, take you over to their FEMA camps. Correct. So the the this is what DARPA does. DARPA puts out these crazy ideas, and whoever can create them, that's who gets the contract. And then whoever were the third, four, second, third, fourth, fifth, they they buy those companies or just steal the uh, source code because they say that, oh, we can only accept your offer of proof of concept if you give it to us and we put the, the Department of Defense encryption on it. Well, as soon as they do that, then they control it. So any company competing to create what was called the Atlas robot, okay, who do you think won? Google. And so they bought all the other companies and then when, because they their motto is do no evil, well, a robot warrior that can kill, that is looks like it's got artificial intelligence, that can drive a vehicle, that can go to war for us? Well, is this not Star Wars? Is this not the evil empire? No. Yes. Well, who is now conducting that? Not Google. Google secretly gave it to the woman who was the head of DARPA, who is now the head of Magnavox, who is now the head of the Atlas Robot Project, which any minute will be able to produce infinite amount of warrior robots for us, which are completely, oh, well, seem well, to be autonomous. Uh, paid for by the U.S. taxpayer? Correct. Okay. Look, Thomas, this is a lot. I just wanted to have a little introduction because we're going to be doing more audios like done. that. I Oh, okay, well. Stephen Crocker got control during Obama's time of ICANN, which is the uh, IP identification assigner role that was always given to uh, literally uh, the student who invented it at a university actually had control of this and had control for the longest time until it was given to a company. It was one man, one man controlled this. It's now been given up to a company that no one even knows who it is that's part of the United Nations that was probably getting ready to align it all with TPP and TIPP and all of the uh, big treaties that would have allowed the internet to be used even as a bigger weapon. You know how in America we like to say, oh, we can't control turning off the internet to Islamic terrorists, radical terrorists. Nonsense. They do it in China. They do it in Turkey. They do it in all the other countries that ask them to do it. We lied and we sent Stephen Crocker, the man who is as culpable in all of this evil as anybody else. Uh, he gave it over. He, as uh, th uh, when he was the head of the Federal Communications Commission, he demanded it had to be given away so we gave it away and that's our excuse for why we can't stop evil on the internet and why we can't turn it off though anonymous went on in one day and turned off 10,000 islamic uh, radical fascist terrorists in america in one day to demonstrate it could be done basically turned off all of them though we in the government the government our government says we can't do that that's nonsense stephen crocker was there in the early 90s when they got together with ibm and said you will build the back door to close out this audio, let's name the culprits who we intend to unmask. We've already started. Stephen Crocker, uh, the Anonymous Patriots, has already done an expose on him. We've already recently, today, done an expose, a beginning expose on uh, James Chandler and the reason Patton, uh, as, as a lead patent attorney, and at what he did with the Espionage Act and with other acts that he wrote, how he protects the patent company to steal 
patents of every type, but particularly big tech, cyber warfare uh, patents. So that's been revealed. It's going to, we're going to come out more and more. So here we go. Who was there on that initial meeting? Stephen Crocker, we know. James Chandler, one of the crookedest people in America. Was Larry Summers there? Larry Summers, who became then, who wants to become the head of the Fed so that he can control the world because he's that crazy. This is a man who lost an $84 million lawsuit against Harvard because he used Harvard to manipulate the Russian economy. And this is well known. Look it up in Wikipedia. Larry Summers was there. This is the surprising thing. Guess who called the meeting? Obama? Well, he didn't call it, but he was the one of the key guys who came up with the idea. John Podesta. Oh, well. <laughs> Doesn't surprise me. Oh, and by the way, John. Guess who else was there? Oh, Robert Mueller. Oh, Robert. Guess Mueller. Guess who else was there? Oh. Rod Rosenstein. <laughs> guess who else was there? I keep going. James Comey. <laughs> oh, the only person. Oh, there. isn't it a surprise that they are now defending themselves was, was, for their Russian collusion, accusing Trump of the same thing? That's what they did because, against Leader Technology. But, they accused them of being crazy, mad men or people who were saying that poor Mark Zuckerberg is having this terrible lawsuit brought against him to the Supreme Court. 11 of 11 points the judge agreed, but still it was dismissed. This is absurd. Leader technology, when they win, has a win, when they win their case, has a win-win-win scenario. Uh, take all the people in the, who stole all these things, who cares? Let them go free confiscate it, turn it into a U.S. utility, uh, no, which no. Betsy I, I, Ross said from the beginning we should do. Take Facebook, take Twitter, yes. take them all. They're all going to yes. be a social network, which is turned into a utility. Private companies can run them, but we're going to tax them. And then when they tax them, we're going to pay leader technology back. We're going to pay the American people back. We're going to lower your rates for your internet service provider. We're going to give you all those apps that they sell to you, which should be free. And we're going to free the internet like Michael McKibben intended to do with leader technology and the geniuses he worked with to create the social network that has... Beca that has been embedded in almost every single thing on the internet. He deserves trillions, but he's willing to take a small payback. It's a win-win-win scenario. We change the patent office. We take James Chandler. We put him in jail for his crimes, and we, we send every one of the acts that he created, and we simply turn back to inventors our Great. We have dropped to number 10 in the world for patents, though we are the number one most innovative place in the world to uh, probably an, ex uh, an exponent of time of 10 to the 10th power compared to the rest of the world. But yet we are 10th for patents in the world. And then we need to find out who got these patents and who licenses these patents because the ones who own them are the criminals. And we need to give it back to the inventors. We need to give America back to Americans. That's a great closing, but I have to end it with something, Thomas. No, I disagree about them just going free. We have a we have a psychopathic criminal clan in Washington, and they need to be rounded up, Mr. Jeff Sessions. They need to be indicted. They need to have a fair trial, and if found guilty, they need to be they need to get the uh, the punishment that the law requires them to have. They're greedy misers you take their money so when you seize their assets i forget to mention that you you first off you seize their assets you do an inventory you seize everything because it doesn't belong to them and you put them back out on the street where mark zuckerberg yeah. belongs in his tennis shoes how, how far will hillary go without her security detail well we see on the street she can't go far at all she's already spent the two billion she has to be out on a and a, and a silly, ridiculous uh, book signing, money making venture. She needs. To, she wants to get a job at Columbia University so she can make some money because she spent the two billion. Do you know how those people who gave you gave her that two billion? You know how mad they are at her. Okay, is that it for us for this audio? Are you asking me, Betsy? Yeah, is that it? You know I'd go on as long as there's <laughs> a, a tape. Folks, as long folks, as there's a tape listen, to record it. Listen, folks, you could help the cause out by pushing out this YouTube. Thomas and I do not monetize anything. We do this because we want you to have it free and unregulated, but we're counting on you to push it out. You have to imagine that we are in an information war, and our bullets and bombs are these truth bombs. So send them out. Load up your Twitter gun and fire away and show President Trump that we know how to use our social media too. Yeah!